Hello everyone, I want to introduce myself. I'm Victoria Kozlowska. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Dermatopathology at UPMC in Pittsburgh University. Um, today I want to start uh, a little talk about skin lymphomas and particularly about primary cutaneous B-cell follicular center lymphoma. And we'll, uh, in the first part of the lecture, we'll review a typical case with histopathological and clinical presentation. And in the second part, it will be uh, a dialogue with the director of Center of Excellence of Lymphomas in Pittsburgh University, Oleg Akilov. So oh, this was a clinical presentation uh, from a clinical provider of that patient. The patient is in his late 70s, uh, a male with um, not so many comorbidities, relatively healthy, and he developed, as you can see, this erythematous indurated uh, plaque on his left chest. And most of us, when we get the biopsy of a lymphoproliferative disorder, um, the first thing that comes to our head is, oh my God, uh, my day is completely ruined. But that's not that difficult as it seems uh, from the beginning. So first thing we have to do is to differentiate if it's a T-cell or B-cell neoplasm. And uh, we can sometimes do it uh, looking by the low power, looking on low power. And as we see here, there is a bottom heavy infiltrate. Uh, we can fairly appreciate um, follicular growth pattern with pale germinal centers. And um, we can appreciate that those germinal centers are a little bit distorted and we can see more uh, dark areas of um, marginal zones here. And uh, when we see follicular growth pattern, there are three things we have to think about. And first is follicular center lymphoma, which can be primary cutaneous or secondary. The second thing we have to think about is marginal zone lymphoma. And uh, sometimes uh, large cell diffused B cell lymphoma can also have a follicular growth pattern. So then of course we have to apply stains and confirm our suggestion that it is at B cell neoplasm. Here there is a CD20 that shows diffuse positivity throughout the neoplasm. Uh, all B cell neoplasms can have um, quite a bit of T cell differentiation and here is the CD3 stain that shows that some cells at the periphery of those germinal centers are actually T cell lymphocytes and those pale germinal centers are negative. So the next stain is CD21 uh, that is very helpful stain for um, follicular pattern growth lymphomas. It can confirm presence of germinal centers. Uh, it's very helpful in diffuse pattern of follicular center or lymphoma, but here it shows nicely germinal centers. The next stain uh, we have here is uh, BCL6 that also uh, is positive in the germinal centers. And we can see uh, again how they are distorted and uh, they are not perfectly round. Uh, and um, of course, uh, follicular center B cell lymphoma is our primary consideration. Uh, BCL2 sometimes is confusing to read in follicular, um, uh, follicular center lymphomas and we have to remember that uh, you still can have a lot of BCL2 cells at the periphery of germinal centers and usually when uh, the center is negative that's what we uh, consider uh, negative and here there is a lot of positivity outside of germinal centers but germinal centers seem to be negative however it's still a lot of uh, BCL2 positivity. Uh, usually neoplastic germinal centers have lower KI proliferation rate than um, reactive germinal centers and we can see here fairly where our germinal centers are. The KI uh, proliferation rate is a little bit lower. However, it's much higher in those um, peripheral areas. Uh, and uh, MAM1 is a helpful stain to differentiate uh, between uh, large cell diffuse uh, lymphoma with follicular pattern growth uh, against um, primary and secondary cutaneous follicular center lymphoma. So usually the cutoff is about 30%. And here we can see in the germinal center, uh, there is quite a bit of MAM1 positivity, but um, it does not reach a cutoff of 30. Uh, sometimes uh, one can also see uh, quite a bit of CD30 um, 
expression in germinal centers, in follicular uh, central lymphomas, and uh, sometimes it mimics uh, Hodgkin disease. And see, we um, we have, have here scattered positive CD30 cells. However, overall, it does not have any clinical significance uh, for the diagnosis. So this patient uh, was, um, uh, was diagnosed as um, uh, primary cutaneous follicular central lymphoma. However, we still um, were not uh, sure uh, that uh, it's not secondary because uh, it was quite a bit of BCL2 expression uh, and uh, it was still a low chance that it is a large cell uh, B-cell lymphoma with follicular growth pattern. So, of course, PET scan was performed and um, it was uh, nothing to be, nothing was found. Patient was negative for any systemic involvement. Uh, he was referred to our skin lymphoma clinic where he was offered local treatment with um, injections of Kinalog and um, a local radiotherapy. So patient is currently under observation of our uh, lymphoma uh, clinic specialist. And uh, Aleka Kilov, who is the director of our lymphoma excellence clinic, will speak a little bit in the second part of the lecture about follow-up and treatment options. <laughs> Hi everyone, and in the second part of the lecture, I would like to introduce Alek Akilov. Uh, he's MD-PhD and he's the director of our Lymphoma Center of Excellence. So uh, I will ask a couple questions about uh, primary cutaneous B-cell lymphomas. How often do you see those? Oh, well, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting. Uh, B-cell lymphoma, not that common uh, in our center. Probably 10-15% of patients present with B-cell lymphoma among all cutaneous lymphomas. And the majority of those patients is marginal zone, probably 25-30%. We have decent number of follicle central lymphoma and a really small number of diffuse large B-cell lymphomas. Can you just look at the patient and tell if it's primary follicular or uh, secondary due to other involvement? Tricky question, right? So uh, the short answer, of course, no, right? But there is a preferential localization mm -hmm. for some type of lymphoma. So marginal zone likes trunks, likes extremities. Um, follicle central lymphoma prefers head and neck area. So sometimes you can kind of, you know, Twist imply, it yeah, saying like, yes, maybe most likely marginal. But of course, histological confirmation is necessary. Uh, and uh, uh, what workup uh, do you usually do uh, when you see a patient? Because sometimes histology is quite difficult to differentiate between primary and secondary follicular lymphomas. What workup is sure. recommended? So uh, funny enough, workup recently was changed. And for marginal zone lymphoma, we don't look for systemic involvement anymore. Um, there is a big theory, big notion right now that marginal zone is uh, due to persistent antigen stimulation. So we'll usually look for some sources of chronic infection, sinusitis, bad dentation. Um, we usually do SPAP, UPAP, abnormality of immune system, something like this. Mm, for uh, follicle center, for diffuse large B cell, of course, CT scan, PET CT. Uh, frequently, because those type of lymphoma uh, involve skin very commonly secondarily to primary lymphoma somewhere else. So you need to find the source and it's usually lymph nodes. Um, there are some cases of splenic involvement with secondary skin involvement. So we need PET CT, right? And we need bone marrow usually. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is this the is basis. sufficient, yes. And then we can kind of like work Twist it out around. further, yes, when we see. Nice. Right. And um, if it's only limited to the skin, mm -hmm. uh, what is the approach? How aggressive mm -hmm. you usually go, and what are the main um, treatment types that you use in your clinic? Mm -hmm. Great question. Because marginal zone lymphoma oral survival over five years is ninety nine percent. So funny enough, you're gonna treat them. You're not gonna treat them. They're gonna do well no matter what. So usually uh, consensus guidelines not to treat them aggressively. Mm -hmm. If you can inject them with uh, canalog, right, with tramsinolone, if you can 
uh, remove them, it's okay. Sometimes if there are several lesions close together, you can do a localized radiation. But um, we should remember that relapse is quite frequent mm -hmm. with these type of malignancies. So you need to um, discuss it with patients openly, right? So no matter what we're going to do, you it may have a relapse, back. right? So when uh, lymphoma localized in a different area of the body and hard to kind of like trace it down, sometimes it's really small. Mm, rituxan, right? Rituximab up anti CD20 antibodies. But again, you know, n certainly not the first, not even second line of therapy. I see. How patients tolerate uh, rituxan? I personally mm -hmm. don't have a lot of experience with that. What are the main uh, side effects and what to expect during that treatment? Mm -hmm. So usually they tolerate very well. Infusion related reaction number one problem. Um, so usually first infusion, we prefer to have it somewhere with us, uh, maybe even the short hospitalization, maybe just for uh, short observation. So um, usually those patients require prednisone, require antihistamines. Um, but if infusion reaction happened first time, it usually doesn't happen next time. So they tolerate it better with every single So it's like a good sign if you have a little bit of a reaction yes, first time. Yes, and some patients even flare up flare up in a lesion, right, where, you know, lymphoma is, and some patients even tell me that, you know what, I was thinking about this spot, wasn't sure, was it folliculitis, something and it else, and, and it, it flare up. Flares so up. we know it's Interesting, that's a good clue. Yeah. Uh, very nice. So, and uh, particularly primary follicular, uh, lymph uh, follicular center lymphoma, the case uh, I was showing uh, previously, how would you approach those? Uh, is it similar way? Mm-hmm. So, of course, with follicle center, we're always concerned that uh, it's probably coming from somewhere else, right? So, uh, PET CT, chest, abdomen, pelvis, right? Um, this is where we come to uh, dermatopathologists and asking if there's like some additional yeah. mutations, should we be worried? What do you guys think, right? So it truly needs to be good clinical pathological correlation, correlation. with everything together. So And the treatment is essentially the same. Treatment or? is essentially the same. Localized, yes, you can radiate, you can, you know, inject excise. I'm not a big fan of excision because, you know, nobody can uh, get good margin and it's not possible even to do margin. So I'm completely against my local excision in those cases. But radiation melts those like bother and usually give very good cosmesis. Very nice. Uh, and hopefully we'll continue our small lymphoma talks uh, about future, about uh, different entities. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.